Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is a review of Wasteland Justice by Madbeard Games. So what is it? Well, the image pretty much says it all. It's a racing game, but it's a violent game at the end of the world. So it's post-apocalyptic racing with guns. Think Mad Max, but on a racetrack. That is what Wasteland Justice is. How the game works is you control three different cars. So you've got a heavy car, a medium car and a light car. Each player has these three. On your turn you roll three dice. Each dice represents a different car. The roll of the dice then dictates how much that vehicle can move. You then choose where to move it to. However, it's important to note that the racetrack is broken down into different types of terrain. So you've got the actual track and then you've got the muddy bit off the side where it's all broken because you don't really get very good tracks in the future when it's post-apocalyptic. And the bad bits will take extra movement to go into. On your turn, as well as moving, you may fire once. Where you can shoot depends on the weapon you're using. Each vehicle will have between one and two weapons depending on the vehicle and the setup you've used. You also have special powers that you can use. The different weapons will have different amounts of ammo represented by tokens. To shoot you will roll the dice assuming they are in range and the range is given on the different ammo cards in squares around you or distance further forward. You roll the dice and if you get a plus sign for your weapon symbol then you've hit. It's as simple as that. If you don't you've missed. Now there are ways to get extra ammo and to heal damage that you've been dealt because the different symbols on your movement dice. If you match up three symbols then you gain a benefit. So the different vehicles have different amounts of health represented as the damage here. So the light vehicle only has one health, medium two and the heavy three. When a vehicle is destroyed, it will be turned over and it's out until it manages to heal, which means rolling the heal sign on that dice, which is represented by a spanner. You can heal when you're not fully destroyed in the case of the medium and the heavy. The end of the game will be when you've finished the race. Whoever finished the race first wins, and that's just the first vehicle from their team to cross the line. So what do I think of the game? Well, let's start with the artwork. I really quite like the artwork in this actually. Um, a lot of it's not finished because it is a prototype, but things like the driver cards are probably the closest to finished. And these are actually really nice. I, I quite like the cartoony style. It's just got this post-apocalyptic roughness to it that I really quite like. Then the graphic design on the weapon cards, it makes it really clear and obvious where you can and can't target in a very simple way. Now, what about components? Uh, I mean, obviously the fact that it's gonna have custom dice, gonna have vehicle meeples, or, well not meeples, vehicle models is really quite nice. The ones I'm using here are just kind of cheap 3D printed ones. So they are prototype models. Um, so I can't really talk about the final quality there. But what about the gameplay? Well, for my taste, the game was too random. There is so much randomness. Everything you're doing comes down to dice rolls. You know, how far you can move, whether you can heal, whether you can reload, whether you hit. Everything is dice rolls. The only decisions you then really make is who you're targeting with your weapons and when. Um, and that's it. And OK, you have got also where you choose to move to, but a lot of the time that's pretty obvious and you're just going to move as far as you can move. So, yeah, it's not really a game with a lot of strategy there. The biggest strategy really comes from when you choose to reload and things like that, because all your powers reset when you hit this halfway mark here. So you kind of want to make sure you've used them by then, but not use them too soon. So that's really the highest level of strategy that there is in this game. One thing that's a nice addition, which is, does save it a bit and almost makes me like this game, is these kind of pushing it cards. And I don't think they have a final name on these yet, but they're really quite nice. You can choose to basically, you know, over rev, over push your engine and get an extra space of movement. But if you do, 
you have to turn one of these cards and you might have nasty things happen or you might have good things happen. So it's very much introduces a push your luck element, um, which for the most part you're going to do. But you might go, oh, well, I'm a bit, I'm in a bit of a precarious situation. I choose not to. Or you might go, I really, really need to. But either way, it just introduces a bit more chaos and fun into the game. And in a way that the dice don't really introduce chaos, it's just either you miss or you hit. It just, that's introducing randomness, but not, not really any excitement. Whereas those, it's like, oh no, I've gone off course, or, you know, this fantastic thing's happened. So those really almost save the game, but still it is too random. I mean, I'm not... A huge racing game fan and the racing game I prefer most has very little randomness in so that kind of speaks to my kind of taste with regards to ra racing games however I will say if you like the kind of typical roll and move racing games with some decision making involved there think things like Formula D then you're probably going to like this if you want Formula D with weapons then this is probably going to hit scratch that itch for you and be a really fun game so that is Wasteland Justice by Madbeard Games. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have, do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.